Amen. Yeah, we give God all the praise. We give God all the glory. I'm just waiting until we go live. Are we live now? We are live. All right. Well, good morning, Exciting Central. We're here to give God praise. Like I said, we're giving God praise for all that he's done. We give God praise for all that he's doing and all that he is going to do. We thank God for this new day. We thank God for all of his grace, his mercy, his new every morning. We thank him for his love. His love is everlasting. We thank him for his joy that he's given us. We thank God for this new day. There's none like that. We won't see it again. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a new chance, God. We thank you, Lord, for a second chance. We thank you, God. This may be somebody's third or fourth chance. But we give God praise because you let us have another day to get it right for you, God. So we give you praise. We lift up our voices. We lift up our hands and we begin to shout, thank you, Lord, because you're awesome. You're great and you're mighty. Can we get on our feet and give God praise? I know it's a little warm, but that's all right. We're going to give God the best praise that we can this morning. Is that right? We're going to give God the best that we have. Let's look to the Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come out here and give your name praise. We give your name honor. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. For this is the day that you've made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We give your name praise and honor. We understand that there is none like you, God. We understand that there is none that will ever compare to you. None will ever compare to your love and your grace and your compassion for us. So even now, Lord, as we get ready for our praise and worship, we ask that you be present in our midst, God. Move in each situation, God. We thank you, Lord, that we will offer you the best praise that we have this morning, and we will let you be glorified in this earth. Can we seal that with a great shout of amen this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, and let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Psalm 1 says we lift your name. One, two, three, four. This song says as we love on you, Lord. We're going to give your name praise and we're going to give your name glory. Come on, put those hands together right here. Come on. Y'all ready? Let's go. Right here. So, so as we love on you, receive our love. Receive our love. Oh, as we shine.
yourself this morning, huh? Come on, I'm saying you are gonna be here we go. The solar, the is greater than ours. declares that I love you forever. Is that your testimony this morning? Yes. Come on, can we get ready? Let's love on the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Let's go. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Can y'all lift it this easy? I love you forever. I love you I love you forever, Lord. Come on, make it big out here. Say, I love, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and say, I love you forever. 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 I love you forever, come on. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you, God. I love you forever. Oh, come on, is that your testimony? Lift it up and say, I love you forever. I love you forever. I 
you forever. Oh, Even when it looks rough, say, I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Oh, because they first love us, say, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever.
start say I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. The word says that he first loved us. And this is because of his love that sent him to Calvary for our sins. He came because he loved us. The word of the Lord declares that God is love. So when we say that we love God, we're loving him with every essence of who he is. I don't know if that made sense to anybody, but I just thank God for God being love. And him giving his love to us that we can outpour back to him. And not just him, but everybody in the world so that they can see who God is in us. So God, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you so much for allowing us to come and worship you today. Yes. God, we thank you, Lord, for your love that sent your son on the cross for our sins so that we don't have to pay for all the wrong that, that we've already done. We thank you, Lord, for your grace that keeps us and your compassion that keeps giving us new mercies every day. And Lord, we declare that we will continue to love you and we will show your love as a light in this world, God. We will declare to the nations that we will always love you and we will show your glory and your, your, your love and mercy towards us. We thank you, Lord, and we give your name praise this morning. And with one last shout of amen, can we lift up this place with a shout this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give amen. God the praise this morning. Hallelujah. If you really love him, come on and let this place know. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. We give God praise for all that he's done. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. I really love the Lord. Hallelujah. How many people really love him? Not because of what he's done, but just because of who he is. And we give God praise for all of who, what, all he's done. He's been a way maker. He's been a miracle worker. He's been a promise. I don't know. Somebody go catch up. He's been a promise keeper. Yes. He's been a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. I'm not going to sing this song, but it feels right right about now. But um, he's just been a, a good God. He's been a way maker. He's been a way maker. He's been a way maker. We thank God for his new mercy this morning. Hallelujah. You may go ahead and take your seats. This, eve this morning is not nighttime. It's far from nighttime. Hallelujah. We're so excited to be out here. Uh, not in the house, but we are the house, so we're excited to be the house of the Lord outdoors, and we give God praise. We want to let the whole world know who we serve, and we serve an infallible, the, 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 the all-knowing, the all-seeing God. We serve a God who can, uh, who can do everything but fail, right? Amen. Hallelujah. I need somebody to say amen out here in this church amen. in the parking lot this morning. Hallelujah. We give God praise for all that he's done. Listen, do we have any first-time visitors out here with us this morning? Do we have anybody who's with us for the very first time? Looks like I see all familiar faces almost, except for one right here. Hi, how you doing? It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so grateful for having you here with us. Thank you so much for joining with us in our morning worship. We are so excited to see you and, and have you worship with us. And for those who are online, I believe we are streaming. For those who are online, if this is your first time, put it in our comments that it's your first time. Hit that like and hit that share button. Let us know that you are worshiping with us, and we'll be sure to reach out and give you a good, hearty God bless you. We are so grateful and uh, thankful that you've chosen to be with us this morning. Can we give our visitors another round of applause? Thank you so much for joining us today. We pray that your life and your week and everything going forward will be so much greater because of God's grace this morning. I love that song. Love that song. Because it could have been me. Ah, ah. Just says, thank you, Lord. No food. All left alone. Okay. All right. We're not going to go into the song. With the trash again, but you didn't, and it didn't, and it didn't, didn't see fit to let none of these things be. And every day, by your power, oh, you keep on blessing me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for That's it. me. I love that. Yes. One more time. It could have been me.
love it when um, we get it. I, I will sing any song that you play. Um, especially if it's a good one, and that's a good one. Because it says it could have been me left alone. No friend, no, you know, no God to, to look after me. But our God is so faithful and he sees after us every day. And for that, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. I could testify of his goodness and his grace all day long, but I don't have enough words to exemplify. So simply say, I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you all right, done it. for me. Yeah. We thank God this morning. That was unplanned, and I know we got to go. We got to move. So, time for the offering. All right. All right. So, um, we give God for all. Um, give God praise for all that he's done and since we're saying thank you we can say thank you in a tangible way it's now time for us to give our offering let's give our best seed that we can this morning we thank God for all of his grace and all of his mercy it is better to give however than it is to receive and we thank God for giving us life and health and strength we thank God for giving us provision and uh, just breath are you breathing this morning do you have an involuntary heartbeat we give God for all, are your eyes blinking and you don't even have to think about it? Amen. Yeah, yeah. So God gives us, you know, all of these faculties of our limbs and we thank God for it. And we just want to show him how grateful we are. Doesn't matter how big your offering is, doesn't matter how, how big your seed is, what matters is that you're giving from the heart. The Lord declares that I love a cheerful giver. That's what he says and that's what the word says, that he loves a cheerful giver. So we're going to give cheerfully, not grudgingly, we're going to give from our heart this morning. All right, you ready to give uh, what you have this morning? Amen. All right, and for those who are online, you will see um, online announcements on how to give, and after the announcements play, you will come back live to us. So we will pray, and we will move forward with our announcements. Let's press this offering. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that every good and perfect gift, Lord, it comes from you. Thank you, Lord, that all things come of you, Lord. It's not of our own. It's of your own that we give back to you. So in that understanding, God, we take a portion of what you blessed us with, and we bless you with it. We give back to you, and we just want to show you how grateful we are. We want to let you know that we are fully relying on you to meet our every need. Thank you, Lord, so much for what you've done for us thus far. And with the seed, we are declaring that we will continue to trust and, and, and rely on you for every step that we will take going forward. God, we pray that the seeds that are sown this morning will be blessed. Bless the hands and those who may not even have, God, we thank you, Lord, that they are blessed, that they will be able to sow um, the next time, God. We thank you, Lord, that there is a blessing of an abundance of and favor on this house. And Lord, we release it to your people this morning. We give you praise and we give you honor for all that you're doing. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Roll those announcements. Let's get some marching music out here. Um, you can play Bless. Remember, God loves cheerful givers. And you can give by four methods. One, go to centraltampa.org and click the Give Online link. Two, by texting Exciting Central with no spaces to 73256. Three, by opening the ECTBC app and clicking the Give link at the bottom. Or, by mailing any contributions to our physical address at 2923 North Tampa Street, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Remember, honor the Lord by giving Him the first part of your income, and He will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest wines. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Thank you and God bless. Welcome to the exciting Central News Network. Food pantry volunteers needed. 
Drivers are needed to assist with food pantry pickups. If you have a heart to serve in this ministry and are available once a month for two to three hours on Fridays, please contact Sister Phyllis Christian or the church office. Hey Central, stay safe in style and represent your church family wherever you go with a mask displaying Central's logo and website. Masks are $10 each and available to order today. Purchase yours by indicating ECT, BC Mask and Gear on your tithing envelope or through the giving link in Realm. For more information, contact the church office. Tennessee Valley Ministry Institute. Love, honor, faith, compassion, and humility. These words may describe you. Have you or someone you know been called into the ministry of counseling? If so, here's your chance to become professionally equipped in one day through Tennessee Valley's Ministry Institute's all-inclusive certified training program. Training will be held on-site at Central on Saturday, October 30th. Cost is $199. For the registration link and more details, visit centraltampa.org. Excite Student Ministry Game Night 7th through 12th grade students, join us for a night of fellowship and fun on October 15th from 7 to 10 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Register on Realm to let us know you'll be there. For more info, email studentministry at centraltampa.org or contact the church office. And those are today's announcements. Remember, you can replay this announcement at any time via our Central app. You can download the app from our website or search for Exciting Central Tampa Baptist in the App Store or Play Store. change the song and I'm trying to stick to the script. Let's go ahead and yeah. stick to the script. Okay, let's go. Amen. Awesome. Our God is awesome. He can move mountains. I will change the song in a minute. Let's lift up our hands. Give God the best offering that we can give him this morning. Let's go right here. Our God is awesome. Lift up and say our God. Our God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My, God. My God is awesome, he'll see when I'm broken, strength where, strength where I've been weak, and forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm Heals me when I'm broken. Strength when I'm Strength where I've been weak. We praise you. Forever he will reign. My God. My God is awesome. He's awesome. Awesome. Come on, can we declare he is awesome? My God. 
the whole world. Savior of the world. The giver of salvation. Giver of salvation. By his stripes. By his stripes I am healed. My God. My God is all. Today I am forgiven. Today I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm His grace is why I'm for his, uh, his faithfulness and his strength. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you so much. You may go ahead and take your seats this morning. We're going to prepare for the word. But before we come, I know you probably missed out on our announcements. I want to encourage you to check out our YouTube uh, page to uh, review our announcements, as well as even go back and review our service on our Facebook Live. We are broadcasting. So if you did miss our announcements, they are playing and are available for you at your convenience. Amen. Amen. All right. Pastor Rennie, are you ready this morning? Can we give God praise for the word that's about to come forth? Thank God so much for all that he has done. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Am I on? Good morning. Can you hear me? You sure? Okay. I can't hear myself. 
Maybe I need to clean my ears or something like that. Good morning, church. It's good to see all of you here. God bless you. God anoint you. God give you a spirit of strength and courage as you face this sun this morning. Woo, it's hot. It's going to be hot because I got to speak. And you know me, I move a lot. So I'm not going to undress. I'm just going to take this out and fold it up. And thank you, worship team, so much. I came in and I asked uh, our leader, I said, uh, what is your theme? And it's exactly what I'm going to talk about this morning. And I see our little drummer boy, our pastor there with the drums. Where is, oh, he disappeared. Okay. All right. I see. Why don't you give him a round of applause? <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of things I want you to remind you about our campaign of who is your one? Who is your one? Are you telling someone about the Lord? Are you praying about that one that's next door, family, friend, or somebody whom God has placed in your heart to tell them about Jesus and his love? for that individual. It may be more than one. It may be a family, five or six or seven, whoever God has placed in your heart, let us know so that we can pray for them and pray with you, alongside you, together as a church, as a body of believers. And then let me also remind you of LCU. We do have those classes going on. We got three more weeks. And I hope our church and members and those who are listening, please take advantage of those. Be beneficial for your spiritual welfare. This morning, I just want to speak about what true discipleship is. Uh, some time ago, I started or did a series. I don't really get a chance to speak often, but I have to say it's a series on true Christianity and then true repentance. And this is the last in that trilogy and what true discipleship is. What is a disciple? What is the meaning of a disciple? Well, the word or the term came to life when Jesus was on the face of the earth. And there were people, masses of people in some instances who followed Jesus. Somewhere on the periphery looking on, just wanting to see who this individual is. Jesus, what his claims were. Others got closer just to see what kind of miracles performed. Just to see, just to say, yes, I saw him do a miracle or do miracles. And for that reason, they followed him. Others followed Jesus because they just wanted to say, yes, I followed Jesus while he was on the face of the earth. And then there were others who followed Jesus because they were believers. They attach themselves to Jesus. They attach themselves to Jesus because of what he did, what he said, and what he offered. And so that term disciple came about because it just represents someone who was a learner or a follower of Jesus in that day. During the course of Jesus' ministry, he told his disciples, those who were truly his disciples, those who truly believed in him, he said to them, if you're going to be my disciples, you got to love one another. That's how people will know. That's found in the Gospel of John. He also said to them that if you're going to be my disciple, then you've got to follow my teachings. Follow what I say. The word follow just doesn't mean you go step by step. It means to obey what Jesus was saying. Obey him because he has words. Words. His words. What he said. What he said to human life. What he said to human beings. What he says to us today. That he can forgive sin. And in so doing by him living within each individual... That person can have eternal life with him in heaven. He has that power to forgive sin. He has the power to heal. He has the power to um, take you home to be with him because that's the promise that he has given to every follower of his. 
Let me, let me lay some foundation so he'll help you understand this a little better. Some foundational truths that Jesus did. He said that we were bought with a price and that price was his blood on the cross. He said to us who are believers who trust him as Lord and Savior that we have been translated, moved from a kingdom of darkness to a kingdom of light. A kingdom where he governs with his light upon our lives and in our lives. And we take that light to the world. We share that light around us. And then, as a follower of Jesus or a disciple, we anticipate the day he would come and take us home to be with him. So we have past where he saved us. We have the present where we are living now as his children on the face of the earth. And we have a future that is set for us in heaven. That's what Jesus did. But you see, we live now. We live in the 21st century, right? We live here. Right now, we are here in Tampa, Florida, living. We get up, we go to work, we eat, we sleep, we take care of our fears of life, and we live. We say that's our lives. And like some of us are going to do this afternoon, we're going to see the rival between the Chargers and the Buccaneers. We're going to enjoy that. It's part of... American culture, we live now, we live here, we eat here, we play here, we enjoy life here, we enjoy living here. So how can I be a true disciple? And, and, and before us, before our world in which we live, we hear and we live in tragedies, we live in turmoil, we live in trials, we live in tests, we live in temptations and we endure them. Just yesterday, I was alerted of a family members in, in, in overseas who were on Friday evening shot dead. Relative walked home, and there were three of them slumped on the couch, all dead. Life now. You never know when it's going to be snuffed out. But we live here with those tragedies. We live with turmoils. Our children wander away and we wonder and worry about them. What's going to happen for us who have children and grandchildren that we are hoping to raise? We wonder what kind of a future they would have. We live here now. We cry out to the Lord many times and we have to make these determined decisions. We make decisions either based on history we make decisions based upon the influence and influences in our lives. Or oh, we make decisions based on our experiences. But as a true disciple, let me help you understand that Jesus Christ is still Lord. It doesn't matter what our tragedies or turmoils or tests or temptations face us as a follower of Christ, as a believer in Jesus Christ. He is still Lord. That doesn't change. He is still Christ. He can still save. He can still move mountains when we pray. He can still answer our prayers when we ask Him to heal, to forgive, to come into our lives. He can still do that. Why? Because He's Christ. He's Lord. And that's who we follow. But beyond that, he has called, he has placed upon every one of our lives to be a disciple of his. Learner, but also someone who can follow him. Someone who will go after him or people who would go after him. And I, I just want to give you three keys, so to speak, about what true discipleship is. And I hope that it will change your perspective of thinking when it comes to the individual Jesus as Christ, merciful, gracious, kind, and as Lord, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The first one is a disciple exercises faithfulness. He exercises faithfulness. Now, there is a difference between faithful and faithfulness. See, I could be faithful to church. 
I could be faithful to my ministry at church. I could be faithful to tithing. I could be faithful to singing. I could be faithful to uh, keeping up with everything that's going on in church and ministry. I can be faithful to my family, faithful to my spouse, and on and on, and all these faithful things that we do. What's the difference? The difference is faithfulness requires us to be steadfast and strong. And when burdens come, and when troubles come, and when the trials come, and when the difficulties come, I don't give up. I stay strong in Him. Why? Because He is within me. And a disciple of Christ stays faithfulness. He exercises faithfulness through the drama and the trauma and the, tra and the tragedies of life. That's what makes the difference. See, that's what made the difference in Jesus' time because there were people who were only looking on and watching on and wanting to latch on to him to see what they can get out of him, but not really and truthfully saying, you know what? I need to follow Jesus. I need to be his disciple because of who he is and what he has given to other people. What he has blessed them with. Just don't follow Jesus for what we can get. We don't follow Jesus just because he can give us something. We follow him because of who he is. In John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30, the Bible tells us that we who are his disciples, we are in his hands eternally. Not gone today, and not gone yesterday, and it wouldn't go away tomorrow. We are in his hands eternally. That's his faithfulness towards us. His faithfulness towards us is in Romans chapter 8, and verses 12 through 17, where he calls us and considers us, considers us his children. We are considered sons of God. That's his faithfulness towards us. Book of Romans chapter 8 further went on and says that when we are overcome by our own weakness, our own natural weakness, our impending weaknesses, the Spirit of God is there within us to take our weaknesses before the Heavenly Father. Imagine that. Imagine that you and I would live in worry and fear over every single thing that come into our lives. Instead of saying, Lord, your spirit is within me and he has taken those before you. That's God's faithfulness to us. That's what Jesus has done for us. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 3-11 Peter, Peter writes that his divine power has given us everything we need to live for life on this earth. His divine power. That means the sovereign almighty God has given to us the power to live. He has given himself to us to live on this earth. That's who we have. And so that faithfulness from God exercised in our lives. The second one is that of forgiveness, or I should say forgiving. Having a forgiving spirit. This is difficult. It's difficult to forgive when someone hurts you, harms you, right? Uh-huh, uh-uh. I know some of you aren't listening. That's all right. You're checking your phone and your mind is somewhere else and it's hot and blazing out here. And some of you ladies, if you had plastic surgery, sorry for you. This heat is not good. <laughs> or if you have makeup, sorry. Just stay in the cool. Drink a lot of water. Believe me. Forgiveness or being forgiven is a foreign alien term in our world of talk and dialogue. We don't use that word often, do we? We don't use the word forgiveness often. We don't use the word for, no, do we have or possess the attitude to forgive? True disciples exercise forgiveness. They're forgiving. Forgiveness releases us from anguish and bitterness and anxiety. 
You asked Peter about that. Peter, back in the New Testament, had asked Jesus, Jesus, uh, how many times must we forgive? And Jesus said, 70 times 7. Now, nah, it doesn't mean you got to go there and just count, okay, I forgive you once, twice, three, the same thing. No, that's not what Jesus is saying. Listen, you forgive and move on with life. You forgive and learn the lessons and continue your journey. There are people who will hurt us. There are people who will harm us. Believe me, as a Christian, I have gone through the experiences. People would say things to hurt you. People would say things to damage you. People will say things to destroy you and destroy your credibility, to destroy your character and your integrity. And as a true disciple, you got to stand up and say, okay, I forgive you in the name of Jesus. You're not going to harm me anymore because I have the protecting arms of God around me. Release yourself from it. Don't hold it in. Bitterness and anger and anxiety and fears, those will be removed because so many people, children of God, live in unforgiveness. We don't want to release it. We don't like releasing it. We want to hold on and have a grudge. And he didn't say and she didn't say and them didn't say. Move away from that. It's time to give that up. And in the name of the Lord, move on and say, Jesus, I'm following you regardless. Regardless of the cost. Regardless of what they say. I will move on. We have to. It's a release. But forgiving, having a forgiving spirit also means that there's restoration. When you forgive, there's restoration. There's healing. When a child looks at his parents or her parents and say and says I want to do what I want to do I don't care what you say mommy about church about the Bible about praying about following Jesus and some today down the line few years that child returns home what are you gonna do What kind of a spirit are we going to have? Many of you have probably heard of the Brooklyn Tabernacle, right? You've heard of that? Great ministry, Jim Simbala. He wrote a little book, Much Prayer, Much Power. I had reason to read it, not, wise, not, not once, but several times. And then he drew an illustration of his daughter. His youngest daughter left home, away from the protection of his family, from her family and protection of the church and protection of the members. And she went out to the world to explore and experiment and experience and have a good time. She got hooked on drugs. Parents didn't know where she was sleeping in New York City. Was parading her body all here, there, and everywhere. She contracted AIDS at that time, considered a deadly disease, and there was really no treatment for it. So she was staring death in its face. And after years of praying and praying, and Jim said he sat one morning, cold, wintry morning, at his little kitchen area, and when he was sipping coffee, he saw a shadow that came up to where that window was and he looked out and there was his daughter in ragged clothes smelly dirty, hungry full of AIDS and full of sores and on and on you can think the condition this poor child was and what are you going to do? close the door and slam the door in her face and say go back? no you got to pull her in take her in Open the door and give her a hug and cry with her and thank the Lord that she has returned. Embrace her and exercise forgiveness because true disciples are forgiving. True disciples forgive. The third lesson, the third key I should say is that of fruitfulness. Fruitfulness.
When Jesus looked at his disciples on many occasions, he had sent them out to reproduce. He had sent them out there so that they can inform and tell others of the message that Messiah has come and Messiah is here. The old prophetic forecasting and foretelling that the Messiah would come has now come true. Come and see him. Come and listen to him. And come and believe on him. That was the message that they needed to give. Come and see who he is. Come and listen to his message. Because he has the words of eternal life. And believe on him for eternal life. See. When we believe on the Lord or any person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and we say you have eternal life and you're forgiven of your sin, eternal life is now within us. Eternal life is Christ's life within us, Christ living within us, Christ being in us. That's what eternal life is. Yes, part of it is looking to the future when we would be with him forever. But that eternal life that he gives is now in us. Within you, within me, within every believer on the face of the earth. <coughs> every disciple has within him eternal life. Jesus occupies every fabric of our lives, every fabric of our being. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, cognitively, and physiologically. He occupies every fabric of our very being as a true disciple of Jesus Christ. That is why when we pray, or when we say anything, or we do anything, we represent Him. Because He's within us. Fruitfulness. If you're going to be fruitful, you got to plant seeds, right? you got to plant seeds. Galatians chapter 5 tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and endurance and mercy and kindness and so on and so on. But if we're going to be fruitful in those areas, we have to plant those seeds. And if we're going to plant the seeds, you got to till the soil. Am I right? You got to till. What tills the soil of the human heart? The Word of God. Simple, the Word of God. God's Word that He has spoken to us and given to us speaks to the human heart and it tills the soil. Some soils are rocky, they don't want to hear. Some soils are thorny, they don't want to listen. Some soils will only grow for a little while and then they fall away. But some soils are deep. And they absorb that tilling. And they get that word. And the seed is planted within the individual. And that seed grows and blossoms and blooms and bears fruit. That is what we're supposed to do as disciples. Bear fruit. Everybody that Jesus Christ or comes into your life. Every day, wherever you are. And you have to say a hello. And you have to say a kind word. And you have to say, excuse me, whatever. Every individual that is in your life, we have an opportunity to show them one of those seeds. Because that's what we are made out of. That's what has grown up within us. We bear fruit. In Matthew chapter 28, which was my text, the Bible tells us, that we go and make disciples. And when we make disciples, we teach them to observe all things. You know, there are experiences in our lives. And I'm sure many of you had them. There are experiences in our lives. A few of them, or many of them, we want to forget. But a few of them stay with us. Because they mean something to us. I finished my training here in the U.S. at a Christian college and I returned to the island of Trinidad and I was invited to a meeting 
And the story has stuck with me ever since. Brother Christian, that's the name they gave him. Brother Christian. Remember that, Brother Christian. Brother Christian began his work with a community of Hindus. People who worship idols, three trillion of them. People who had Krishna and Vishnu and Sita and Lakshmi all over their homes and houses. And each one had a flag planted in bright yellow or bright pink or bright blue or bright red. They were Hindus. That's all they knew. They lived in utter squalor. Dirty. That's all they knew. They live in mud huts. That's all they knew. They live in worshipping the cows. So the cows were very close to the little mud huts that they lived in. They didn't sleep in mattresses. They slept on the floor. And as they have these little kids running around, they were all no clothes on, naked and muddy and smelly if you were into that village. Brother Christian used to trade with them. He was of African descent and he traded with them their produce that they had. And after a couple of years of trading, they eventually built a little pathway or road where a vehicle or his truck can go in to get the produce rather than they hauling it out that two miles to the main drag or the main street where he can take the produce and sell it. Brother Christian looked at this and he said, listen, you can do better. I can help you do better. So he told them, build your homes, build your houses on 10 foot high so that w when you build that, you can store your produce underneath your house and you would be safe and you'll be better. Mosquitoes and gnats and vipers and scorpions wouldn't get to you and your kids. And they'll be better, they'll be healthier. But as Brother Christian shared the idea with them, he got alongside them and he dug the trenches and dug the holes. And while he was doing that, and the kids came around, he was saying, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. He would sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. He would sing the choruses, one, two, three, Jesus loves me. And as he began to sing these songs, the little kids would take it home and began to sing and be happy. That the elders of that little community didn't like it. So they took him one day and they beat him mercilessly thinking he would die. The kids, seeing what had happened, ran to him and took care of him and put him in his truck hurriedly and said, Brother Christian, get out. Please leave. Brother Christian got better. It didn't stop him. A few months later, he went back and he... He told them, listen, we need to educate your kids. So he brought someone with him and he said, let's build a little place where we can teach your children how to read and write. And then eventually, as that happened, he got the, you know what the Gideon's Bible is? He got somebody to give them the Gideon's Bible so he can distribute to them as Christmas gifts. Right after distributing those and these kids now, a few years later, they took Brother Christian and put him on a tree, just like you see a palm tree, but they got these long thorns and they tied his hand behind his back and his feet behind his back and nailed him, as it were, against those thorns. And in the midnight hour at 12, he began to cry, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Why do I deserve this? The kids came again and rescued him and took him out and said, Brother Christian, get in your truck and go home. Don't come back. These people are going to kill you. 3rd time brother Christian came back a few years later it took him about a year and a half to come back because he was so burdened for this community of Hindus people who were lost and dying in a Christless eternity with improper health and the kids not educated and his heart began to become so burdened and burdened and he went back and this time when he went back They tied him against a tree that had these big black ants. We call them bach bachak in the Caribbean. I don't know, some of you may have seen him. And they left him out there with his hands tied and his feet tied against that tree and took shovels and dug those nests so they can start biting him and putting all the toxins to his body. And he began to swell. His fever went up. 
temp body's temperature and he thought he was going to die. And when he looked up into the sky, he saw this little sliver of a moon and he sat crying, Oh Lord, have mercy on these people. And he began to sing the song, Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Lord, hear my prayer and touch their lives and heal them. A few hours later, these people, all the elders and the mothers, little kids by this time, some of them were nine, ten years old. They gathered around this little place where they had tied him up and these ants were bite, bite him up, biting him so much and he fainted. They told he was dead, fainted unconsciously. And Brother Christian looked up to see this person praying and that person praying. And the same people who had chained him before and beaten him before and tied him up started to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, you go to that village, about 400 people listening to the word of God preached. Today, out of that little congregation that Brother Christian did, you have lawyers, you have doctors, you have engineers, who teachers working in, and people working, helping the society. My friends, when I listen to that man's testimony, that experience, his testimony stuck with me for life. I couldn't help it but think of a man who God has burdened so much for as a disciple of the Lord. To go into a community of Hindus, alien and foreign to his beliefs, as an African individual. Where there was so much hostility among those people groups. He went in there. And the mercy and the grace and the love of God to win and tell those people about Jesus Christ. The love of the Lord conquers. Folks, there are people around us. Doesn't matter what color they are, what style they are, what culture they are. Doesn't matter what they come from, what creed, whatever they are. They're all God's children. We are God's children. Saved or unsaved. We are all God's children. They're all God's children. Doesn't matter how sinful they are, how bad or mean or ugly they are. To, they're all God's children. Jesus said, look unto the fields, disciples. And see, it's ripe unto harvest. Church, central, exciting, central, Tampa. Baptist church, church, people, listen to me. God has placed us here for a time like this. God has put us here, this moment, in this time, in the now, in this building, in this locale, in this community, for a time as this to be fruitful. He has put us here as his disciples. To be fruitful. What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Are we just going to sit down and listen every Sunday morning to a message? And I've come to church and I've been found faithful? Or am I going to exercise faithfulness? That through the drama and through the trauma, I will push on. I will move on. What are we going to do? How fruitful are you going to be? When we stand before Jesus Christ and we look into the face and he said, well, here is a crown of righteousness and here's an incorruptible crown and here's the crown of life. What crown are you going to receive? What crown? True discipleship. Fruitful. Forgiving. Faithfulness. Let's pray. Father and our Lord, there's no greater challenge than to live our lives now on this earth. It is hard. It is difficult. But the disciples and other Christians who followed you when you were on the face of the earth faced similar trends. Busy lives. Computers, they didn't have them. But we have them. We can communicate to the world with a touch of a button. 
We could look into the world in different countries and different places just with a touch of a button, with a click. We can communicate with people with just a touch of a button. What are we communicating? What are we saying? Lord, I pray this morning that you would touch our lives and touch our hearts to be like Brother Krishna. We may not have a Hindu community, but Lord, the Hindus are coming to us. We may not have the, the Muslim community as it were in other, other countries, but they are coming to us. We may not have the religious affiliations with other groups, but Lord, they are coming to us. We are right here in this community, in this land, at this moment in history. Not to be just who is your one, but who is our five? Who is our ten? Who's our 15? Who's our 20? Who's our 25? Who's our three? What kind of disciple are you? And I pray this morning that you would make, make, make it. Make us, Lord, understand that we are here to serve you. And our purpose on earth is to be fruitful. If anybody's life needs tilling with the word of God, please. Give Jesus your heart. That's the only way you're going to be fruitful. You can't be fruitful without Jesus. You cannot be a fruit unless Jesus is in your life. You cannot be a fruit unless the word of God is in your life. You cannot be a fruit unless you exercise faithfulness. And I pray this morning that God will move in your heart and your life. Right where you are. As you surrender to him and yield to him and say, Lord Jesus, make me your vessel. Make me one that can share and be courageous and be bold. Just like brother Christian. Bold. Lord, I pray you'll grant to us a peace of heart and mind. A peace, Lord, that passes all understanding to know that you are with us and you are in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I hope you'd respond to the music. While the music is praying, if you need prayer right where you don't have to come forward, you probably raise your hand right where you are. You need prayer. We'll be praying for you. If you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, and there's someone you need to talk to, please let us know. We'll make ourselves available. As He is Lord. He is Lord. Ladies. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a stirring word from the man of God. What a stirring word from the man of God. What a stirring word from the man of God. Yeah. Come on. Where he leads, I will follow. Where he leads, I Where he leads, where he leads me, I will follow. Oh, Lord, Lord. I'll go with, with him. Come on, all the way. A disciple is somebody who follows. Where he leads.
today is there someone who would like to follow him today to be his disciple just step out believe and step out in faith and say I want Jesus to be my Lord right now in this open field right now don't hesitate just stand to your feet and say I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord Whatever he says, wherever he leads, I want to follow. And I want to make it known. Please don't hesitate. I know the Lord is working with somebody's heart. Do not fight it. Do not hesitate. Say yes right now. Right in the open field. Before all the angels of heaven. Step right now in faith. And say, I want to be a disciple. I want to follow him. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with. Go with with him all the way. Stand with me, please, as we come to our close. Stand with me. Stand with me. I want you to just keep playing. I want all of you to turn around a little and just look at the field. T turn around and watch the field. And I want you to imagine in your faith's eye that. The entire greenery you see is covered with people listening to this service. Can you see that? Can you see that? And there are people on the outside of the fence looking in. Can all of you see that by faith? Imagine it and see it. That this is the place to be. That's why we have the logo that we have. The logo means this is the pin drop. This is the place to be. I want you to see it in your eye, filled. We thank you for coming today. Today we have quite a bit more people who have come out. And, and, and we, we are going to make this outdoor spot. Uh, use it. The Lord has blessed us with it. October is going to be a nice, cool month. December, we'll come out here twice. Uh, and and, and just, 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 just follow the Lord. Come on. Uh, I, I want to thank all of you who prayed for me, called me, and expressed your love and affection as we, as the family celebrates the going home of my centenarian mother. Thank you so much for it. This coming Saturday here will be our going home celebration. Thank you. I want you to say that. Pastor Rennie, what an excellent sermon. Very wonderful sermon. Thank God. And uh, we're going to close up. After we have finished, of course, the Bible Fellowship, small groups are going to be across the street. If you are a little warm and you want water, there's ice water there for you also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All hearts clear. Were you blessed to be here today? Come on, was this a blessing out there? Tell you. Pray.